Welcome to Wings of Arrow, Advanced Education and Research Organization. To know more, log in wingsofarrow.in. Today we are going to study about centrifugal compressor. The most rapid process in the development of the gas turbine was made during this period with the use of centrifugal compressor. A centrifugal compressor is the one its class of machines in producing pressure rise and is also known as turbo compressor. In this type energy is transferred by dynamic means from a rotating member that is impeller to the continuously flowing working fluid. The main feature of the centrifugal compressor is the angular movement of the fluid flowing through the impeller is increased partially by virtue of the impeller's outlet diameter being significantly larger than its inlet diameter. Compressor process is carried out in the centrifugal compressor which comprises mainly of four elements inlet casing with converging nozzle whose function is to accelerate the fluid to impeller inlet. Next comes impeller in which the energy transfer takes place resulting in a rise of fluid, kinetic energy and static pressure. Diffuser whose function is to transform the high kinetic energy of the fluid at the impeller out into a static pressure. Main aim of providing diffusers is to increase the static pressure by reducing the kinetic energy. Outlet casing which comprise a fluid collector also known as volute. Principal operation when the air is sucked into the impeller eye through an accelerating nozzle and reel around a high speed by the vane on an impeller disc. At any point in the impeller, the flow experiences and centripetal acceleration due to a pressure head. Hence, static pressure of the air increases from the eye to the tip of the impeller. It may be noted that air enters the impeller eye with a very high velocity. The friction in the diffuser will cause some losses in stagnation pressure. It is a normal practice to design the compressor such that 50% pressure rises occurs in the impeller and another 50% in the diffuser. The contribution of each component of the compressor in producing the pressure rise in the stage is shown in figure. The inlet casing with acceleration nozzle directs the airflow into the impeller eye or inducer. Since the velocity of the air increases as it approaches the eye and its static pressure will decrease accordingly. In the impeller, the blades impart a swelling motion to the air which leaves the impeller tip that is outer diameter at very high velocity. Energy transfer takes place in the impeller and the static pressure of the air increases from the inducer to the impeller tip due to centripetal acceleration. The purpose of diffuser whether ventless or wind is to convert the high velocity of the air leaving the impeller into pressure by slowing it down carefully to an acceptable level. As the impeller rotates, the fluid is drawn into the blade passage at the impeller eye. The center of the impeller, the inlet pipe is axial and therefore the fluid enters the impeller with a very little reel or a tangential component of the velocity and the fluid outwards in the direction of the blades. The fluid receives energy from the impeller while flowing through it and it is discharged with a high pressure and a velocity into the casing. To convert the kinetic energy or a fluid at the impeller outlet gradually into pressure energy and diffuser blade and diffuser blade mounted on diffuser ring are used. 
the stationary blades passage so formed that having an increasing cross sectional area which reduces the flow velocity and hence increase the static pressure of the fluid finally the fluid moves from the diffuser blade into the volute casing which is a passage of gradually increasing cross section and also serves to reduce the velocity of the fluid and to convert some of the velocity head into static head let beta 1 be the angle made by the blade at inlet with the tangent to the inlet radius while beta 2 is the blade angle with the tangent at the outlet v1 and v2 are the absolute velocities of the fluid at the inlet and outlet respectively while vr1 and vr2 are the relative velocities with respect to blade velocity at inlet and outlet respectively the case of ideal compressor with the flowing assumption for a radial vein impeller losses due to friction are negligible energy losses or gain due to heat transfer to or from the gas is considered very small the gas leaves the impeller with a tangential velocity equal to impeller velocity that is no slip condition is assumed the air enters the rotor directly from the atmosphere without any tangential component so applying these assumptions the euler equation under ideal condition becomes e equals to u2 square this is a maximum energy transfer that is possible therefore the energy done by the impeller on a unit quality of air is given by w equals to e equals to u2 square the following equation represents the maximum work capacity of a radial vein impeller for ideal condition as per thermodynamic analysis we have the equation from the energy equation transfer w equals to e equals to h02 minus h01 if rc is the pressure rise based on total pressure then we can rewrite the equation as w equals to cp t01 open the bracket rc gamma minus 1 by gamma minus 1 centrifugal effects on a curved blade create a bending moment and produce increasing stress which reduce the maximum speed at which the impeller can run good performance can be obtained with a radial impeller blade backward curve blade are slightly better in efficiency and are stable over a wide range of flows either radial or forward curved blades forward curve blades can produce the highest pressure ratio for a given tip speed but inherently less stable and has a narrow operating range its efficiencies are lower than are possible with a backward curved or a radially curved blades slip factor the ratio of actual and perfectly guided values of the wheel component at the exit is known as slip factor mu mu equals to actual wheel by the perfect guided wheel condition ct2 by c2 prime the overall stagnation isentropic efficiency in terms of pressure ratio can be termed as eta c equals to t01 open the bracket rc gamma minus 1 by gamma minus 1 by t02 minus t01 the losses in centrifugal compressors the total losses in the centrifugal compressor may be divided into two groups frictional loss and incidence loss this frictional loss is proportional to c square and hence to m dot square whereas incident loss is in terms of drag coefficient cd are the proportional to cd dot c square now comes surging and choking a typical characteristics of the compressor at one particular speed has been shown as a given figure let us assume that compressor is running at the point c if the resistance to the flow is increased say by 
closing the valve provided at the delivery line in the compressor, the equilibrium point will shift to point B. Any further restrictions to the flow will cause the operating point to shift to the left, ultimately reaching the point A. At this point, the maximum pressure ratio will obtain. If the flow is still reduced from this point, then the compressor cannot increase the pressure ratio any further and therefore pressure ratio starts reducing. This reduce in pressure downstream after a short interval of time, the compressor again start to deliver the fluid and operates and shift to point C again. Again the pressure starts increasing and operating points move to the right to the left. If the downstream conditions are unchanged, when once again the flow will break from the point A and the cycle repeats with a higher frequency, this phenomena is called as surging or pumping. With an increase in the mass flow rate, the pressure ratio decreases at the point A, B, C, D and hence the density also decreases. This effect results in a considerable increasing velocity with an increase the absolute velocity and the incidence angle at the diffuser vein top. Thus, this is a rapid process towards a choking stage. The slope of the characteristics therefore stiffen and finally after the point D, the mass flow rate cannot increase any further. The characteristics finally become vertical. The point D on an characteristic curve is called as a choking point. Thank you for watching this video. If you have further inquiry or requested video, drop down to our mail wingsofarrow at the rate gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe for more updates. For the time being, take care, stay blessed, inspired and fly high.